Hey, Josh Ryan Abraham, uh, USCfootball.com. Just want to see how the process went where you were contacted by Lincoln Riley and made the decision to come to USC. Well, um, at some point, I, I kind of figured Coach Beanball would come to SC with uh, Coach Coach Riley. They've been together for a long time, had a lot of success at Oklahoma. What I saw that that wasn't happening. Uh, uh, I was certainly interested in the job. We had a mutual contact with Coach Alex. Coach Grinch and I worked together for two or three years at, at Missouri. And uh, and so they just kind of took there. Then there were several conversations on the phone between um, Coach Riley and I, and uh, obviously there's always business sides to these these negotiations, and and uh, but but those things all worked out, and uh, and but but more importantly than that, you know, it was talking about the opportunity of the USC, the the, uh, the the timing of this job at this time and right now, and and all those things to me were super attractive. It was very attractive to me too because I would heard what kind of man that Coach Riley is, and the kind of the character that he has, the way he runs his program, the culture that he builds, and and I wanted to come be a part of that. And obviously, uh, it's kind of fun to be in, in the room with him also and uh, get into his mind when it comes to offense. And so um, all those things were very attractive to me. And uh, you combine that with uh, 76 degree weather, I was like, I'm in. Hey coach, Mark Pelkin, WeRSC.com. So you come from the SEC footprint, recruiting offensive line out, alignment down there comes fairly easy. How do you shift gears and say, all right guys, I'm out here in the Pac-12 now, come follow me and let me coach ship out there? Well, I think the, the main thing with that is the, the SC offensive line tradition. When you look at SC offensive line tradition, it's, it is arguably the best in the country. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to take maybe the top 10 offensive line of all time in the NFL, four of those guys uh, would, could arguably be SC, SC Trojans between Munoz, Baselli, Matthews, and Tyron Smith. So that type of tradition, um, that type of, uh, of history, you know, and in the last three years, SC offensive lines had two first round draft picks. So um, all of those things to me, uh, are going to help us attract some of the top talent in the country. Um, so that type of tradition is number one. Number two, you know, uh, I've got to take my success and track record and and and, it, and and explain that to the guys and show it to them so that they understand uh, that we can help them get where they want to go. And we can build a great offensive line here. But I, I would tell you this: it's been interesting so far. Um, you know, having offered kids at, at two different schools from the same kids over this last recruiting cycle and even for next year, um, the, the reaction to SC is very positive. It's very positive. And so that's got me excited about what the future can be here in the offensive line. Hey, Josh, Dan Grace, Fan with the Associated Press. Uh, what do you know about the group of players you're inheriting? Did you recruit any of them at your previous stop? Recruited a couple of them. Uh, uh, we were just kind of a uh, man, you know, we, we had enough players in that part of the world to, to make it work. And so we came out and recruited a couple of guys that were on this list. Obviously, they chose that seat and they stayed, stayed out in this part of the world. But uh, 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 I've had the opportunity to get out so far uh, a couple of times and just walk throughs and, uh, you know, watch these guys. Uh, do a couple of workouts and different things. Uh, and uh, I like what I see so far. I think these guys are very dedicated. Um, they're excited. They're hungry. They want to win. It's important to them. And I think the older guys in our program understand what's at stake and, and how much work it takes to win. Winning is hard. It's not easy. And, and they understand that the, the common denominator of winning all the time is work. And they're doing that right now. So. From an attitude standpoint, I'm very pleased with where our line is at and the way they've attacked this thing just being here for the first month. And so we just got to continue that and keep it up, and, and good things will happen. Hey, Josh, I'm Gross Park from the Orange County Register. Uh, we know Lincoln is a little bit more hands on with the offense than a lot of head coaches. Uh, what were those conversations like with him about how you guys would collaborate during the process? And Well, number one, Coach Riley is 
is the play caller. And uh, the play caller's vision is always going to be uh, the vision for the offense. So my job is to support him. Uh, it's to bring some new ideas, maybe some new thoughts, uh, present those, um, that, uh, and maybe some supplemental things that I think can make the offense better. And, uh, but, but that's that's a uh, that's a secondary role. My my primary role is just to support Coach Riley, make sure that um, the things we're doing uh, be you know be there to double check, make sure the things we're doing are are uh, going to give us the best chance for success. And and then you know obviously we'll, it's always a collaborative effort. Coach Riley said that yesterday and it is. I've had a I've had a great time so far being in the room with him talking football over the last month, and it is a collaborative effort. And, and there's a lot of great ideas in there. But right now, what we're really doing is I'm learning his mind. I'm learning his way of thinking about offensive football. And um, and and then after we get through the, these first couple of months, then we can kind of start maybe talking about some different things. But right now, my primary job is to learn his offense, uh, learn his way of thinking, and then support that uh, the best way possible. Uh, Coach Eric McKinney from WeRSC.com. What do you look for kind of first in an offensive lineman? What do you stress uh, in, in your position room? Well, the biggest thing with an offensive lineman, number one, is, is frame. You know, they've got to have uh, a frame to be able to carry a certain amount of weight to be effective at this level. And, and really to get to the level where we want to go, that's, that's to play for and win national championships. Um, and so, Guys can be underweight, but they can't be undersized. They can't, their frame can't be too small to eventually carry that weight. Now, in a perfect world, you're finding guys that are athletic and they have the weight and the frame, it's all there. Uh, but but sometimes you find those guys, sometimes you don't. Every class, you're going to have both. Um, but we're looking for, basically, from an offensive lineman, we're looking for the frame, then we're looking for athleticism, for flexibility, and bend and foot quickness, and then the last thing I'm always going to evaluate is strain. I want to see guys that strain on film, that play hard, that love to play the game, that play it for the right reasons, and and that's what we're looking for. And if we can find guys that mark all those boxes uh, from, an, from a physical standpoint, then, then then we feel pretty good about it. The rest of us why they call us coach. Um, uh, but I think the other component that you can never uh, – that you always have to consider. You can never shortchange his character. And so you try to create a bigger picture of a guy, uh, what he does in the classroom, his grades, how he takes care of things, how he treats the people around his school, um, you know, what who he is off the field as a person. And so you're trying to find, if you can find great athleticism, great strength, great character, those are guys you can build championship football teams around. Hey, Coach, Jerome Martinez, UNCfootball.com, 24-7 Sports. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the job. Uh, first question was Bobby Haskins, uh, a guy that transferred in from Virginia before you actually kind of got here. Um, talk a little bit about him and just what you see from him and inheriting a guy like that. And then second question just being uh, Caleb. Uh, Caleb Williams comes in. How does a guy like that that's dynamic, mobile, can move the pocket, help you or how is it you know different coaching for a guy that's mobility and can kind of escape the pocket you never really know what he's going to do well first Bobby uh Bobby is is, is going to be an integral part of our line next year um you know he's obviously very athletic he's played a lot of football in a good conference in power five conference uh and been very effective I looked at him at the last school I was at really liked it and uh when I heard that he was coming to SC and I was taking this job here, uh, I was very excited about it. Um, now, after meeting him in person, uh, you know, the, pertaining to him fitting in, I love his attitude. And he has come in, he's already like one of the guy, one of the members of the team, and that's just because Bobby wants to be, he wants to have brotherhood. He wants to have, he understands the team concept, the team camaraderie, and he's done an absolutely unbelievable job with that. And uh, so transitioning to Caleb, just being around him for a couple of days, I see a lot of the same characteristics in him from an attitude, character standpoint. He gets it that the team comes first and that uh, the best thing he can do is, is to rally the team uh, and, and, and be part of the team, part of the brotherhood. And, and that, uh, that is the very, that is priority number one for Caleb and for Bobby. 
And, and that's one of our big challenges with all, you know, I think Coach Riley addressed this yesterday. It's a unique time with a, a lot of transfer guys coming in. We've got to get this team to mesh together like they've been together for two or three seasons. And uh, that all comes uh, through our daily habits, how we do things every day. But to answer your question about Caleb and his athleticism, obviously, I think, you know, that's why everybody's so excited. Uh, you know, I mean, you look at him on film, uh, you see what he did last year at Oklahoma. I, I remember a play against Kansas where the running back was stopped for short of a short of the first down, and he grabs it, strips the ball out of the running back's hand, and goes and gets a first down. And I'm just like, wow, the awareness, the um, the instincts of that play at that time were just really phenomenal. So I think his athleticism, obviously, when you've got an athletic quarterback that can extend plays, uh, get out of trouble, it obviously helps your offense to operate. Um, and it helps you uh, kind of make those big plays at certain times in the games when you really need them. Thank you, Coach. We have time for one more. If anybody wants to give one last one. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Last one. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Josh. Adam from the Orange County yeah. Register again. Um, what? Um, you know, you all probably. I tenure there, it started out really well. It, it didn't end as well after going here free. We, we had a lot of things to happen that year. Um, Injury-wise, we lost seven of our top, seven of our starters by game three for the season. Uh, so it was kind of a wild year. I've never been in a year like that, but there's no excuses. That's just the way it is. No one cares, you know. Uh, you, you perform or you don't. I would tell you this, uh, some of the general things I've learned were to always be positive. Uh, Always make lemonade out of lemons. Their lemons are going to happen every day in life. They're going to happen all the time in football. Uh, always be moving forward. Uh, the second thing I learned is if you believe in something, stick to it. Don't get talked out of it. Uh, stay in it. Stick to it. Teach it. Uh, uh, get your guys to execute it. Uh, believe in it. Uh, and, and, and make sure the details are right. And if you get the details are right, you get the details right, you can execute and win and win at a high level. And um, I think uh, that was my time uh, as offensive coordinator. Uh, the last thing I would say is that, you know, you want to make it a collaborative effort as much as you can, but at the end of the day, somebody's leaving the room. Um, you know, I'm a team like Coach Riley, and they Coach Riley's leaving the room. So if he said, Josh, this way we're good, I'm saying, yes, sir. I'm going to go get it done that way. Because we all benefit when we win, and uh, and uh, and so uh, I think the leadership component of that, uh, and I've really enjoyed that out of Coach Riley so far. I've enjoyed being around that. I can feel that little uh, uh, that kind of intensity to his personality. And so uh, I think he understands that, and knows it. He's got a really nice balance between collaboration and leading. And so to me, that's what it's all about when you're the guy in charge. And uh, some of those things I learned as an OC, and I look back and say, man, I could have just bet Steve O'Shaughnessy doing really well, so it's got excited about the future. Perfect. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you for joining us via Zoom. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, I couldn't be there in person, and I uh, look forward to meeting all of you.